¿Qué tal? ¿Qué tal? ¿Cómo están? Bienvenidos a esta entrevista eh, Fire Sports. El día de hoy tenemos al ciclista eh, Christian eh, Musterman. Eh, Christian, thank you very much and welcome to this interview to Fire Sports. Yeah, thank you very much. Well, first of all, Christian, uh, well, tell us uh, how has been your experience? Uh, you are a very young athlete and now you become a professional uh, cycling uh, runner. So uh, tell us what would, how has been your experience since junior tournaments and right now, because uh, overall after the pandemic, how, how did you live this process of the pandemic? Yeah, the pandemic is really interesting, you know. Um, there are not many races, especially last year. It was difficult for us to find any races because everything was cancelled. This year it's uh, a bit more easy because the organization, yeah, they make it luckily possible with all the security and um, with the health, so it's perfect. And um, yeah, I was young when I started uh, cycling. I was starting like with 13 years old. And um, I just came to cycling because of my brother. He uh, raced a little bit and I came from soccer and um, I had to stop uh, playing football. And then I just uh, was thinking, okay, come on, let's try to make uh, the sport like my brother do. And um, I was quite successful immediately. Some races without I just uh, did it just for fun. And uh, that way, when you have success, you love to do the sport. I started to train and uh, then I went to a sports school in uh, Düsseldorf in Germany and um, yeah, the trainer, he was really good and he supported me with everything, with the sport and uh, like that, I, um, yeah, I learned how to, how to be fast on the bike, I trained a lot, and, um, yeah, I got successful and uh, then I came to the German national team and um, we did like some World Cup races, the big ones, and being traveling around the world. And um, I like this sport, so I decided to continue. And um, then, yeah, after some years, I won uh, three German championships. And like that, the, the interest for a professional team came up. Um, and with 17 years, I signed my first professional contract. Uh, Germany. Since then, now I'm four years professional. And um, yeah, as I said, the first two years was really nice, perfectly uh, nice racing around the world. And then the pandemic started, and um, it was like something new, you know, like you trained the whole winter, you prepared for the season. And then in Germany, COVID came like March, and everything. It was difficult for everyone and um, it was difficult to stay motivated for the training and that's why I'm really happy that now there are some races for meanwhile pandemic you know how do you keep your shape because yeah all, all the activities stop for all and 
how are uh, you high performance athlete keep you shape yeah it's uh important is um good food healthy nutrition and um drinking a lot also meanwhile the training so um i try train like seven days per week sometimes also two times per day and 100 kilometers per day And um, yeah, it's important you stay active and um, you don't get lazy just because of the pandemic. You have to work hard, stay motivated because at one point I knew races will happen again. So yeah, I trained the whole pandemic and uh, yeah, also the gyms are closed now in Germany and um, I'm really happy and lucky that I have a friend who owns a private gym. So I can always go to the gym being on the bike and um, yeah, that's it. Okay, okay, okay. And uh, Christian, uh, what what would be the place that you like most in of all your races? I was um, in Japan. The, the the people in Japan was really friendly, really nice. But um, all the European uh, races, they are like really crazy about the sport. And I think when the people are really fascinating about some kind of sport, it's um, It's like a fire in your in your own body, you know. It's like, yeah, you always go on the limit, and it's nice to be around the world. But a favorite country, I don't have to be honest. It's everywhere nice. Christian, your sport, well, unfortunately, got any uh, situation about credibility with Lance Armstrong situation. Do you know the situation? And uh, now you, as a young athlete. What would you say the people to to trust to trust again in this sport and that you are a uh, athlete that compete in uh, with ethic and yeah. no cheats? How, how do you say to that people? Yeah, I, I mean it's already some years ago when Lance Armstrong, uh, yes, yeah, said his interviews and how. Yeah, we get tested every day. Like, uh, I have to text in my phone where I am and find me everywhere at every time. And it's even impossible to take you know, because we get always tested at rate at home and they don't even say when we get tested. So if I wake up and the, the door is ringing, then the tester is there and I... Um, cheating is no way to, to go to success, you know. Overall, because you sport uh, ask a lot of effort from your body, right? And your recovery time must be short, shortless, in less time. And one day you, uh, you cycle at 1,000 kilometers and the next day another, right? It's, it's very hard your sport. Yeah, re recovery is uh, the key point. You know, if you recover fast, you can train more. And um, for this, like I have like uh, a computer which I put on my legs, and it's like massage. So massage is really important. Good nutrition is really important. And for me personally, I sleep a lot. Like, I try to get nine hours, ten hours of sleep every day, and uh, I feel fresh. I don't drink any alcohol. I just uh, eat healthy food. And like this, you recover fast. And of course, important is if you train hard, you need some rest. So after three days of training, I have an easy day, just training a little bit the legs to the body. And uh, after that, also the key point is having a rest day. You said that the rest is a very important factor To, to keep in the in the, the sport. Well, you as a young uh, athlete, well, also uh, you don't spend time with some friends hanging out, you know, uh, yeah. going to party. So this is a, another part of the athletes that need to give up just to uh, push, uh, to boost their careers as athletes, as sports people, right? Sure, yeah, yeah. Like, um, I don't go to parties, and um, meanwhile, the season the season is starting from January. So, 
my only time when I can go partying with friends is like in December. And for sure, this time I use for partying, but otherwise, and as I said, I don't drink. And um, that then in December, I like pizza and fast foods that I get also motivated to be serious again, you know, in January then. You said you start uh, in cycling at 13 years old, right? Yeah. Uh, is is that age, uh, well, in another sport, if you don't start since child, it's too late to start from teenager. For cycling, it's a good age to start cycling? I mean, if you start before, for sure you have some um, more experience and uh, for sure you can be better at as someone who just started with 13, but I made it as 13 years old and um, I'm really happy about that because you just start slowly, like you just train one hour and just when you want, you know, with fun. And it's really important to have fun with your training. You get tired of it. So it's important to um, know what to do. Really to have a good trainer who always controls what you do. And if you start, in my opinion, too early, like I have friends which already started with eight years, nine years, and after that, they just stopped with the age of 15 or 16 because they got tired of all the training and the hard work. And um, yeah, that's it. So um, I'm personally really happy that I just started with 13 and um, I continue really happy with fun with passion so with 13 i think it's not too late for this sport you said one important and very interesting point the coaching because well maybe you can get a give of god with uh, some skills natural skills but also coaching is very important what do you tell us about the coaching the coaching is really important because like i uh with a coach he's not so I have to call him every day and um, it's important that you stay always in contact with the coach because um, my coach always asks me in the morning how I slept. If I didn't sleep good, he don't train let me much, you know. So if I sleep, he let me train for six hours a day. I think you can have like three three times really good shape, and for these goals you have to be perfectly in time. The coach is just the one who really controls your body, your system, how you feel, and uh, if you're sick or not, it's what to train. So it's really important that you have a good coach, which you trust him. You're just the man on the bike who train every day, but um, if you have in your coach like if you take three hours you to get two more you know, because it's like the plan you have to follow the plan if you follow the plan and you have to coach then success will for sure come Christian would you tell us uh, what would be your plans for this year maybe next year what places would you want to to be uh, uh, cycling for sure my dream is um, riding the Tour de France or any other Grand Tour like Giro d'Italia or Vuelta a España. And um, for this year, I just hope that there are some races left this season. But I'm always unsure if the race is cancelled or not. So it's important to stay in shape and uh, being because nobody knows how the pandemic will continue and if there will be any races. It's difficult to say, but for sure, I try my best and um, always give 100%. Christian, did you make any process to compete to get one spot of Olympics in Tokyo? In, uh, you mean the, the Olympic Games? Yeah, that's correct. It was, uh, before I was track cyclist and um, I had like a vision for Tokyo. But I checked, now I'm on the road, so I'm now a road cyclist and it's really hard to get spot in, in, uh, in the road race. So this year I... The Olympic. Uh, you 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 said uh, you want to compete to the three major uh, routes around the world: to the France, Giro, and Vuelta España. 
So for you, uh, well, we know uh, Tour de France is the highest point for any cyclist. For between Giro d'Italia and Vuelta España, what would you want to start? What would be your, your debut on these kind of routes? What do you prefer most? I think uh, for sure the Tour de France is like very but I like to do Italia as well because I like to go there be passionate about cycling. So um, I like mountains and um, that's what I prefer the Giro. So um, now, uh, well, with that situation about the pandemic, we're going to start with the new normality, many sports. Uh, start to get people into stadiums, to attendance people, you know. Uh, what, what, what's your message for that people who uh, want to start an activity or people who want to attend an, any sports event? Uh, you are a professional athlete. Uh, the people, is it important that attendant your, uh, your events? What we yeah. do also. Um, for sure, the sport without spectators and people around the races is not the same. It's like a training race, you know. If there are no people, then it's like something is really missing. So I definitely prefer people at the race for sure. But um, the health is really important. So I I hope that um, the people respect the distance. And um, if the distance is there, then I think there is no. Yeah, no chance to get uh, COVID. So um, if all the people stay in distance, respect, then it's no problem. Uh, Christian, uh, when did you start to, when, when did you become as professional? I started to be professional four years ago because um, at first, you are like in uh, in Germany. You are in you 17, you 19, and you 19 when you turn 18. The teams, if you are successful, the teams will have an eye on you. And um, before it's not possible to be professional. So from 18, and um, luckily I had an offer of some team, and I decided to go to my team, Team Sauerland. And um, yeah, from from 18. Uh, Christian, uh, what would be the the hardest part to become a professional uh, from the amateur to professional? What would be the hardest part? I think, um, as I said, you have to live healthy. So uh, you should not drink alcohol at all. You should eat healthy. And as I said, the coach is really important. So um, for sure, training and healthy nutrition is the key point and um, fun most important thing if you don't have fun if you take it too seriously then at one point you get tired of the sport and also of the training so you have to try to wake up every morning motivated going on the bike enjoy the ride enjoy every kind of training and uh, the most important thing is to leave it yourself as possible Christian, sport as human activity, well, sometimes has a lot of emotions. Uh, do you ever think uh, about to give up once of time, you know, maybe you had a very bad day. Someday you had a very bad day and you say, come on, give up. I, I can't, I can't anymore. Um, do you ever had that kind of feelings that give up or maybe just to stop? Of course, there are a lot of uh, times of that, especially in the winter time when it's cold, when it's snowing in Germany, it's really hard to go out of this house where it's warm, where it's cozy. You can watch uh, movies and stuff like that. It's really hard in the time. And for sure, there are a lot of days when I think, come on, why you do this sport? Cancel, have fun, go on parties, enjoy with your family, friends and stuff like that. But you have to keep your goals in your mind and the goals which you want to achieve, they give you more. The goal is like starting training, unmotivated. The feeling after the training is really 
the most best thing, you know. If you know that you did, or that you went out in this cold and you went for three hours, four hours training, then you can be proud of yourself. And the proud feeling, this is what always gets me. After the training, I'm always the most happy person because I know, like, most of the people wouldn't go out now and I made it, you know. And the opposite, what is your motivation every time that you ride your bike? The motivation is being the best cyclist in the world for sure, but uh, I know that it's not uh, that it's not possible because there are some some guys really crazy strong. So um, yeah, the main goal for me is to the France. So um, it's always like having in my in my mind I want to be at the Tour de France one day. Uh, that's why I always go training every day. You have to visualize your your goals in your mind, and then. Everything is possible. Pablo, ¿algo que gustas preguntarle? Sí. Eh, eh, ¿Cuál es el, el objetivo, objetivo de, de Cristian para, para este año, año como dentro, su, dentro de su carrera bueno, eh, profesional? Ok. Cristian, uh, would you tell us again uh, what, would be, what would be your goal for this uh, season? Yeah. So my season for this year is... Um, I think we go to uh, Romania to the Tour of Zibio and uh, um, it's a big race. So I try to be there in shape, in top shape. Next week I'm going to France. Also there is a big race and um, just being always in the best position, you know, always best uh, shape. This is the main key and for sure winning some races is the goal. Alguna más, Pablo? Well, who who has been your uh, most inspired people from the cycling for you, Christian? It was uh, it was li really someone who was uh, in my club team when I was really small. It's Ruben Sepuntke. He was. Um, He turned professional and was riding for Team Cannondale. So um, I was always with him in the trainings, and he, I, I saw him like an idol because he made it from from the team where I was really small when I was 13. So um, I knew that he made it in the club team, so I can make it too. So um, I was always looking ahead of him, and um, that was the, the dream to be like him, you know. But otherwise, it was for sure Alberto Contador and Fabian Cancellara who won the biggest races in this world. And um, I would I would really like to win Paris-Roubaix also one day. So um, Fabian Cancellara is for sure one of my biggest idols. ¿Alguna más, Pablo? Sí. no sé si Uh, Paulo asked, uh, how, how, how many times do you spend on training? And uh, how's your uh, kind of uh, your workout? Yes, yeah, so my day looks like this. I wake up, then uh, I need always coffee in the morning. So before training, I drink one coffee, have a good breakfast because you need energy for the whole day. And then I call my trainer and he, just, he always asks how I sleep, how I feel after the day before. And um, if I feel great, then most of the time it's always like four, five, six hours training on the bike. And after the training, most of the time there's also sometimes a gym or core training. So um, core stability is really important that you keep your body in a good shape and that you have enough power to, to keep the position on the bike every day. But uh, a normal day for me is like five hours on the bike and sometimes also after in the gym. Christian, uh, you said the food is very important. Do you follow any uh, any rule about uh, food? I mean, like, are you vegan, vegetarian, or do you also eat meat? I eat really everything, but um, like at days where I don't train much, I try to avoid carbs. So um, at like as rest days, I just eat salad or stuff like that. Just really small stuff and easy stuff. But uh, if I have like five hours training, I try to eat a lot of carbs like pasta or rice. 
and otherwise i eat like um yeah like a normal person like i'm not vegan or a vegetarian so i eat everything pablo Christian, what will be your very next competition? The next competition will be in France. It's a Tour de Finistere. It's a professional race in France. It's like 200 kilometers long and some climbs. And there are not many people finishing. So um, I try to be always in front in the race to avoid crashes and stuff like that. So Tour de Finistere in France will be my next race. It's in uh, one week. Wow. Pablo said that it's amazing. Well, next week will be your race and we're gonna follow you up uh, to know uh, what about with your stage, your results. And Perfect. yeah, we let, we're gonna follow to you. Perfect, thank you. Uh, well, uh, Christian, uh, tell us a uh, more introspective uh, about you. Uh, when, when you were a child, uh, what what was your uh, uh, your dreams? Uh, what what Christian want to do in his uh, adult life, future life? How how Christian lived his childhood? Uh, my childhood was really like I guess every little boy, you know. I started play soccer, so um, I loved play, playing soccer. I wanted always being a professional athlete. I always was sporty. I did every kind of sport, like basketball and stuff like that. And um, I, I was fascinated about sport. So I knew that for like 10 years or five years, I always wanted to be a professional. Athlete. It doesn't matter in which sport. Now I ended up in cycling. But when I was really small, for sure, I was dreaming about the professional football player. So since your childhood, you kept the dream to become a professional athlete. Yeah. Uh, what is your favorite soccer team in Germany? Uh, it's uh, Bayern Munich. <laughs> the more recent yeah. champions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every team. Any, any special they, player, any idol that you yeah. have from Bayern Munich? Bayern Munich, no, but um, I'm a big fan of Cristiano Ronaldo. So I also follow Juventus Turin and um, he's like my idol, you know, he's, his work ethic is, is really, really, uh, yeah, he's a champion. So um, even if I'm a cyclist now, I, I follow Cristiano Ronaldo, what he is doing. And um, he's definitely my biggest idol. It doesn't matter that he's a football player. I don't care. He's really a champion for me. What, what position did you play when you uh, play soccer? I was a defender. So I was not at the position of uh, Cristiano, but uh, I was defender. And, uh, I liked him anyway, you know. Are you a good player or, well, your skills uh, well, from cycling is better than soccer? <laughs> no, I, was, I was a good soccer player and um, I guess it could have been even uh, possible that I would turn professional. But um, I had a knee injury, so I had to stop soccer. And um, that's why I decided then to do the sport like my brother. And I love cycling, so I continue with that. And luckily, I didn't have any problems anymore with my knee. Wow. Well, Germany lost an excellent defender, but they won an excellent uh, cycling rider. <laughs> thank you, thank you. That's so uh, nice. No, well, it, it, this is the uh, this is a good point about the how the sport is uh, how the sport is uh, managed in your country, right? Maybe. Yeah. Uh, some people doesn't have enough skills or uh, in your situation, the injuries yeah. is uh, a void to keep your develop 
in one sport, but you get a position in another sport and well, now you're becoming a professional. Yeah, I'm really happy about that, you know, because I always say everything happens for a reason. So even if I crash right now and have like a broken arm or something, I don't care at all because I say it happened for a reason. And there is one funny story. I, I was um, preparing for the world championships in junior categories. And just two weeks before the world championships, you had to prepare like six months before. And um, we were preparing with the national team for the world championships. And I was just, I just broke my arm two, two weeks before the world championships. So it was like a really, really hard uh, time for me because I thought now my goals will not happen. I always wanted to compete at world championships. And this is like, I, I always was motivated because I thought it's my, my only chance to be in the world championships. And um, I continued training and um, luckily I had good doctors. And the funny thing is then um, the national coach trusted so much in me that he let me go with a broken arm to world championships. And it was not really bad because I finished fourth. So I was just, uh, just losing really close a medal. And um, this was the, the point where I said, if you break something, don't worry, you will get another chance. And um, that's why I say, if something happened, I don't care because everything happened for a reason. And luckily now the knee injury in football, they made me to a professional cyclist. So I'm happy about that. Pablo. Uh, would you tell us your feeling just to be just to be in the sight of in a cycling race because well, one situation is just when you watch the tv and well everything it's cool looks like but now yeah. you are in c2 and you have to compete what are your feelings to to be in that competitions yeah like i'm kind of calm calm guy you know like at the start i'm never nervous i try to to be focused and i stay in the team bus as much as possible to not get distracted from any other people so um like before the race i'm always calm and um i i just text still with my family or with my with my friends before the start because it gives me like like a feeling that i'm still at home you know like some guys have like yeah, not problems, but they get nervous because the race will start and stuff like that. But like for me, it's not not a nervous thing. And um, meanwhile, the race, it's just crazy. You know, the spectators like they give you a feeling you if you're suffering at the climb and there are spectators, you don't feel the pain in the legs. You know? So um, it's really a fascinating sport. And it doesn't matter how how hard it is and stuff like that because you know there's always a finish and um, the spectators really give you power and motivation and when i watch tv it always looks like sometimes boring because the races are really long and um, the start is never important and um, it looks like this it's just important the final but in the race it's really hectic there are crashes and it's all about tactic you know you have to plan everything precisely before the race in the evening before with our team boss and uh, spot director so um, from the morning before, we just always look the, the race course before. So we check out where are like dangerous zones, like dangerous downhills or where you have to be in the front. And from the TV, you can't see it. It's like just the road. And um, then like also the wind is an important key point, which you can't see in the television. Like the wind can, can really affect the race. And um, it's just like, if you're in the race, you have to be always like, yeah, you have to check where is the wind, where are in dangerous uh, zones, where you have to be in the front. And um, but with the spectators, it's always like a great feeling to be to be racing, you know. And this is what the sports makes because we come so close to the to the fans and to the spectators. Because in like in football, you sit in a stadium and you don't uh, really feel the energy of the fans. But in sport and uh, cycling, it's like really crazy. They 
they sometimes they run after you and they it's just it's really amazing and you can't really get it from from the sofa when you see the in television but when you race it's it's a really great feeling christian uh, for you do you plan to keep in germany for your professional development or are you planning to move to another country uh, um, I have friends in Germany and I really like spending time with my family and friends. So over the, over the summertime, when the season is, I stay in Germany, but um, most of the time, like in winter, it's too cold in Germany. It's always snowy, rainy, and it's always like two degrees or stuff like that. And then I, in, in winter, I always stay in uh, Spain, in Mallorca, because it's really perfect weather there. You can train every day as you want because there's always sun. So in the winter time, I'm always in Spain in Mallorca or in other training camp. Like now I'm in Turkey because uh, it's nice weather here. And uh, in Germany, it's like a bit cold. And, um, but in the, in the summer, I prefer to stay in Germany with family and friends. Have you learned some Spanish? A little bit, yeah. Un poco. <laughs> <laughs> Pablo? Well, uh, Christian Paulo uh, says that really, really appreciate that you give up your time for this interview. It's really, really interesting. And if you could give us, uh, give the our spectators, uh, what advice? What about we that sports? What do you tell us about your sport? Yeah, for sure. I think also it was really nice, and um, for sure we can keep in contact and make another uh, interview someday. Ace. It's no problem. Algo más, Pablo? Uh, Christian, well, you're, you're welcome again next time, and we're gonna follow you. And if will will be possible, we're gonna have another interview just to know what about with your updates. Awesome, we will make it. No worries. Uh, well, Christian, uh, also it's an interesting talk, uh, and just to know uh, what about with your uh, with your performance. And all the best. Uh, we 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 wish you all the best, and see you next time. Muchas gracias. Perfect. <laughs>